Dear me, three to six months, watch how I make you proud. Hello there and welcome to another video. My name is Xavier and this is Tech Xavier where I help me help you go further in tech. In today's video, we are going to explore a micro certification called Welcome to Service Now. This is a lab type course that will demonstrate that you understand some of the fundamentals around ServiceNow as an end user and an ITIL user. If you haven't really explored the previous course or the previous video that I posted on the course, check that out because a lot of the foundational information you'll need to do this lab will be in there. This lab is free, so you don't have to pay anything for it. It's free, you just start and you get a nice badge. Okay, so here I am in the micro certification homepage. You have seven different modules and lessons. So we have the first one, which is personalize your instance. We have favorite a filtered list, create and comment on a record, create a visual task board from a list, order an item from service catalog, create a dashboard and report, and then flag and comment on a knowledge article. With these types of micro certifications, you have to do what's called validated activities. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. What happens is you do a validated activity and this score is at zero when you're first going through it. And then what happens is as you go through the aspects of the lab, then you'll click on validate and it will validate it as successful or not successful. And so there are different elements to this. So depending on the major elements of the lab, you may have two or three things that you need to consider doing in order to validate the activity. It has some way of running through the instance, the dev instance and checking, hey, did you put this value in? Do you select this option? I want you to pay attention to the instructions very carefully. So if there's something that says before you begin, read it. And then it says to impersonate a platform user. So by default, in most labs, you're gonna be the system administrator, just the normal kind of mid-tier administrator. You won't have any elevated security roles and you also won't be impersonating any other user. The other thing I wanna mention for this lab and any other future labs is that as you are impersonating someone, until that lab tells you explicitly to stop impersonating a user, then I would stick with this role throughout. And the other thing is, as you're going through these labs, it's important to go in order because you might find that one lab is dependent on another. Now, I'm almost sure that the reason why you're taking this micro certification is to go further in your career. And I wanna give you a little context about why these different lessons are important to your career and how you can really speak to the skill set that you have when you're applying for jobs. So the first one, personalize your instance, is really important from, let's say, an instructor perspective. So as a system administrator, you are going to be called on to maybe train new users, especially if you're going through your first implementation of ServiceNow. You need to train users on how to use the platform. And the more they know or the more they feel in control of the experience they're having with the platform, the more likely they will be to adopt this as a platform that they can use. And I find that sometimes it's not so much the end user who's submitting the ticket that may have an issue because this could be a massive upgrade to whatever you were using before, but there can be a little bit of a learning curve for the support team because they have to do more to manage a ticket, respond, they have to know hey, if there's a work note that I put in, is that gonna be visible? Is a comment gonna be visible? What's the SLA? Maybe you haven't used SLAs. Next one in terms of favoriting list, depending on how you have things set up, if you're not using, let's say, like the service operations workspace and you have maybe the app menu exposed, there are a lot of things to click on. So let me just show you really quick what I mean. Okay, so here I am in my PDI and I went ahead and just pinned the all menu. But as you can see, if I'd look up something like groups, there are tons and tons and tons of groups. As someone who is new to the platform, I wouldn't know where to start. I wouldn't know it, but I couldn't click on this first level that I had to click on the sub level. There's just all kinds of things that are a little difficult. 
But a lot of these different groups, if we use a user group, for example, if you favorite them, then now you can access them a lot quicker. And you can call it whatever you want, groups, groups and assignment groups or something like that. Whatever you want to call it, you can list it and then you can position it depending on what you have in your favorites. So if I click done and go to my favorites, now I have this group option here. And then if we navigate to the incident, like we'll just do all incidents here. So this is a list. Again, this is something that may or may not be intuitive for someone who is just new to the platform to navigate. Some things may look really, really familiar. Some things may not. And so it's important to know how to navigate this stuff, how to filter things based off of what you're looking for. You may want to sort something based off priority. All your critical things are at top. You might want to sort by assignment group. You may only want to show things that are empty. So there's all kinds of features that you as an administrator need to be able to highlight and showcase to the folks that are working in the platform. All right, the next one is going to be creating a comment on a record. So this is really important. A lot of the issues between, let's say, operations and IT is really just a lack of communication. Users are far more understanding than we give them credit for. You just have to communicate what's happening. So if a problem is taking a little bit longer, hey, add a note. And the great thing with ServiceNow is that it's a portal, so people don't have to sit there exchanging emails all day or calling into the service desk every five minutes for an update. As long as there's a culture around documentation and good incident management, then comments are going to be available for end users to see what the progress is, and they can have a bit of an expectation around how soon something will be resolved. Next one is visual task boards. So this one is really cool. Again, if you've ever used a Kanban chart, like I have some study with me videos where I use Trello and I move things from one column, if you will, to another one based on completion. And so you can do the same thing with incidents. So as I showed you before, let me go ahead and navigate back to the incident table. Okay, so you can see all the different incidents here. And let's say that I wanted to just focus in on critical incidents. So I might look for one critical incident. So I have this one, this is a P1 or priority one. Now to right click on it, I would show matching just so I can only see these types of priorities. And now I have my list. But let's say my personal preference is to work in a visual task board. Since I've already actually created one on the back end, I won't show you how to do that because that'll spoil the activity. But let's just say that I want to add this to that. So I can select one of these and then add to visual task board. And then it's going to say, hey, which task board do you want to add? And I'll say incidents by priority. This is one that I created. And now that it's there, I can go back to that favorite. So I made a favorite VTB incident by create by priority. And boom, there it is. So this is something that's really critical. I like to see my incidents in this manner. And so I can group it that way. And then when it's done, I can just move it on over to done and then update the record, resolve the incident, whatever the case may be. And next on the list is ordering from a service catalog. This one is pretty self-explanatory. I won't necessarily go into this process, but you want to have services available for people to order things. And ordering isn't always just a physical product. It can be just requesting a service. It can be a password reset. Anything on the service catalog, you want to make sure that the experience is really smooth for an end user. It's easy to follow. It's not too many steps and it's repeatable. And you can get feedback and you can see what that looks like as a user going through this particular activity. Next one is creating a dashboard and report. You may have to do this for an executive or for a manager or for a group of managers so they can see incidents or requests that are pending, open, what kind of action does their team need to take. And that way, again, we're building trust with end users by way of organizing our own stuff, organizing our IT operations. Lastly, you have this one with flagging and commenting on an article. This is really great because if you are a system administrator slash knowledge manager at the same time, then you want to make sure that you have a process for reviewing articles that are flagged, making changes or reaching out to the process or product owners to get changes and feedback. 
And again, this is a really good first step to, again, improving the user experience as well as making sure that you know how your platform is running and what features are available. Okay, I hope that you take your time through this micro certification. I cannot stress enough that you need to take your time going through the content, making sure that you understand what the instructors are asking you. And the more you do this, the more it'll help you hone in on your listening skills. Because as a system administrator, you are always gathering requirements. And you're gathering requirements from a multitude of different people, uh, stakeholders or audiences. You have the end user population that may have a glitch or reporting some troubleshooting issue with the platform. You have fulfillment teams that may be having issues with the platform or a function or accessing something that you said they could access. You'll get requirements from your platform owner to review certain features and see if you can turn on integration, then from your architect, or maybe your CIO wants some um, reporting done a specific way. So your ability to interpret and understand what's coming to you and then make decisions based off of it starts with this micro certification. So that said, thank you for watching. And as always, don't be hard on yourself. Just work hard on yourself. I'll catch you in the next video. Dear me, three to six months, watch how I make you proud.